Hey guys, I'm Alex from Deep Cycle Power. You might know me with the project uh, called Megacell Charger. In this video, I want to tell you about uh, a new product that uh, we worked on on the past months. It was in between uh, getting the Megacell Charger ready for production. We had some dead time and uh, we thought to bring on some uh, new projects that will help you. This is called uh, the Electrodacus uh, project. You might have heard of it. And I also want to clarify a few things about this project because some of you uh, started saying that uh, this is I don't know, a ripoff or uh, other uh, stuff like that. But I want to assure you that uh, we did not steal the project. We actually talked with uh, Dacian. Uh, I, I found out that he's uh, also Romanian, that he lives in Canada and he started this project a few years back when he was in need of a BMS to uh, hold his solar panels and the batteries uh, for the home he was building. So we discussed about getting the project mass produced. He is producing these units uh, by himself and uh, that's a lot of work. I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, how much work it is to get the PCBs assembled, uh, check them out, verify that uh, all the parts are solar, write the software, test the, the unit, and then uh, fulfill the shipments. It's, it's a lot of work, even if it sounds like it's not a big deal. If you have the required tools, it is a, a lot of work. So he's not able to produce too many units per month. Uh, and we discussed with uh, Jehu, he told me that he likes this BMS a lot and uh, we gave it credit and tried it, uh, so how it works. We did a prototype ourselves and um, tested the unit and it's a great product, especially the software has a lot of features and a lot of checks, a lot of things that will give you the right power you need to, to control the batteries and all that so let me tell you what what what's what's this project about uh, what we did and you might have seen the video we did on um, on the crowdfunding campaign so yeah this is how it looks i will show you also the original one you can see it on my screen we'll go over the the specifications of this unit it's the one that we're redesigning is actually the SBMS 40 and this is how it looks. This is how the main circuit looks like. Get the better close up. So we actually redesigned the, the circuit. We used the same schematics, but the components were moved uh, left and right to, to allow us to build this BMS on a single board. The original one uses separated uh, layers and have the, um, the MOSFETs on a different type of PCB that's harder to reproduce and also makes it more uh, expensive and more difficult to assemble. So we have this SBMS 40. So like I said, this is the equivalent of SBMS 40. It has the MOSFETs. It can handle up to 40 amps at 24 volts. Here we have the connector for the display. And this is how the display part looks like. The nice thing is that you can mount this wherever you like, like we did on, on this unit here. So we separated, we actually separated the BMS part from the display and uh, mounted it on uh, this battery here. So this is SBMS 40 equivalent and this is the SBMS 0. This has no MOSFETs right here and we actually left the wireless part on so we can uh, see what what's up with uh, with the BMS using the wireless application so yeah these are the main 
redesigned products that we created. We actually did uh, another version that we called the um, SBMS headless. And that will allow you to, um, to use the BMS without the display and without the monitoring part, making the BMS more affordable. All right, so let's check the user manual for the SBMS 40. The table of contents says that we have the install instruction, thermal management, cable selection, external load battery temperature, the 16 pin connector, selecting the battery and PV panels, Wi-Fi, internal data logging, and the user interface. The nice thing about having uh, a product on the market for so long is that it got pretty stable and it has a well-written user manual with all the information required to get the system up and running as fast as possible. So on this page, you can see that you have the schematics of uh, connecting the solar panels and everything Hardware-wise and uh, software-wise is the same with uh, the original. It's just the parts are arranged different on the PCBs and uh, there are different connectors. We didn't use the screw connectors because those are uh, expensive and hard to assemble. But you can uh, solder the wires directly on the PCB and uh, it will do the same thing. Okay, so let's go on specification. You have the battery type, you have any type of lithium cells and super capacitors. We actually got a bank of capac capacitors from uh, Dacian that helped us test the units and make sure it charges and discharges properly. It has a number of cells from three to eight cells. Some user asked us if it's possible to set this unit to work with uh, 14 or 16 cells. But at the moment, it's not possible to use master and slave. And we discussed with Dacian about this feature. And he said that he will prefer to keep this on a low voltage side. It's much more safer, uh, especially for users that are not very experienced with um, uh, high voltage and also the hardware must withstand uh, the high voltages all the um, all the chips and all the mosfets must be replaced and it's it's a different it's different league of bmss i should say so uh, for now it's 24 volts it's up to 24 volts uh, that's eight cells battery voltage limits eight volts to 32 volts that's that's the minimum and max. So you have battery PV recommendation for 12 volts. That's four cell lithium iron and uh, 32 to 36 uh, cells PV panel. For a 24 volt setup, you have eight cell uh, lithium iron and uh, 60 cells PV panels. Max PV open circuit voltage, it's uh, 47 volts and that's mono or polycrystalline panels with up to 72 cells. Dual PV input, you have PV1 and PV2 with separate current measurements and ideal diode. And then you have the specifications. You have the ratings for uh, the amps. That's 48 amps for the SBMS 40 and up to 75 amps for SBMS 120. The SBMS120 is very similar with uh, SBMS40. The only difference is that it has more MOSFETs. Then we have the load and short circuit limit. So we have the cell balancing current that's uh, max 200 milliamps per cell. We have power terminal max wire size. Uh, we didn't use those terminals you can actually uh, solder the wires that you want directly on the PCB you have a 16 pin connector and an 8 pin connector you have the data logging to internal flash that's quite useful if you want to see 
how much power uh, was in and out your system. It has a total login for uh, one year period. You have Wi-Fi to connect to the SBMS and see the states. We'll actually do a video on that because we forgot to add it on, uh, on our presentation. So in the following days, I will make sure we, we shoot a video of using the Wi-Fi and uh, see how it looks. And that's that there's a lot of room to improve there to make the app better and um, allow multiple options, uh, multiple monitoring, uh, connect this to Raspberry Pi maybe and have a lot of features added on this BMS. Okay, you have the install instructions here. And what you see on step three, it's actually showing on the display. So you'll see the diagram to connect the, um, the cells on this connector right here. Depending on how many cells you have on your system, you'll have to connect the pins um, in a certain way. That's how the BMS chip actually needs it connected. It's not something that um, Dacian preferred to have uh, cell 1 and cell 2 and cell 7 and cell 8 for a four configuration, a four cell configuration. So you have the connect and load. Cable selection, external load. A nice thing about this system is if you're looking to use this system with a big battery setup, you can use your own shunt and uh, relays to control the system without going with the power through the system. It also has a battery temperature sensor that you can connect to your battery and also has um, over temperature protection for the MOSFETs. So in case it gets too hot, it will cut the connection and uh, let it cool off. You'll have to uh, start it manually again. Selecting the battery and the PV panels. We have the PV array size for the BMS. Here on the Wi-Fi, you can actually see how the app looks. That allows you to see all the information you will see on the display. Plus, you also get access to the logging, to the data logging. That's pretty cool. You'll see how, the, how much power you consumed and how much power it was pushed to your system. Also gives you information on how to interpret the data and uh, make your own app, maybe. Internal logging, specification user interface will it goes through the entire user interface and like I said before the software is exactly the same software that's used on the original SBMS uh, you see all the pages that are available on the menu or the most important ones. It has UART, you can communicate with the BMS. It can be extended in the future to do all sorts of automations. I saw Dacian did some automations with uh, his system like dumping energy into a um, heater uh, because he had so much excess energy and could not store it in the batteries. Manual and install menu have the belt menu and also have the um, diagrams of the circuit. This is what we also studied on the connecting the PCBs and also have the firmware binary, the software and the hardware source that you can uh, download from this project and build your own if you want that. Discussing with Dacian, he actually told me that other two companies try to reproduce this unit but uh, they failed to do so. He sent me some pictures uh, of the um, attempts that the other companies had. Apparently, we're the only one who could uh, reproduce this unit from the source files that he gave. At least, the only one that uh, made it public so far. If others did it, 
uh, could not find any videos or uh, images of that. So let's go online and check what other people are saying. And then you have the SBMS 40 here. So it's four months ago. Swipe Magnetron. Swipe Magnetron is uh, the person that did this review. That has this cool unlock feature to make sure you don't uh, press on the buttons. So yeah, he set it with uh, 1860 cells. see how it how it can set it up so I encourage you to check some of these videos on this unit and also SBMS zero is the other unit that we redesigned We chose to keep the same form factor to make it faster to assemble in and also allow people to upgrade the unit on their own if they want to. So they can actually solder on all the parts, write the new firmware for the SBMS 40 and they get themselves uh, an upgraded unit uh, using the same PCB. Redesigning uh, makes, makes factory work much more um, complex like having different design different uh, PCBs and having to do different films for those PCBs and assembly setting the pick and place machine to different coordinates uh, it's uh, it's more labor so we chose to keep the same design and uh, don't add the parts that make the difference between the SBMS 40 and SBMS 20. Okay guys, so that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I hope I made things more clear about this project and the fact that we did not try to rip off the benefits of the work that has been put into this project so far. We actually made a deal to share the profits with Dacian because the software and the hardware design are great and, and I think it would be a shame for this BMS not to be pushed as, as far as possible so people can enjoy the, um, all the features that this hardware and software offers. You can also see a video done by Jehu on this system. You'll find the link in the description of this video for the campaign and we also added more information about some other products that we worked on. Have a great day, Alex.